Preparing to depart Philadelphia for Cambridge, Massachusetts to assume command of the Continental Army, George Washington wrote a letter to his old friend Burwell Bassett in which he confided, I am now embarked on a tempestuous ocean, from whence perhaps no friendly harbor is to be found. Washington's words reflected his uncertainty upon learning of his unanimous appointment as Commander-in-Chief of the Continental Army. The battles of Lexington and Concord in April of 1775 and the struggle of the New England militia to drive the British from Boston made war a reality in the summer of 1775. On June 14th, Congress voted to create the Continental Army and placed a Virginian, George Washington, in command. Washington's military experience as the commander of the Virginia Regiment during the French and Indian War made him very aware of the overwhelming task he faced. He realized that he was about to take command of a relatively small army made up of largely untrained troops. Military success would not only entail raising, training, and supplying an army, but would also require an officer corps capable of undertaking the challenges that lay ahead. Initial enthusiasm for the American cause drew in colonists from all social ranks. Landed gentry, merchants, farmers, and men who owned no property and had little wealth enlisted to serve in the Continental Army. While they shared a desire to overthrow English tyranny, they also shared a lack of military experience. Keeping the army intact became a pressing issue. Congress shared the fear many colonists had of standing armies and determined that the first enlistments would last for only one year, a policy Washington argued against. No sooner were men trained than their enlistments were up. The rigors of military life, disease and illness, families facing hardships at home, and a lack of victories in battle soon dimmed the ardor of many early recruits who could not be persuaded to re-enlist. Congress addressed the problem late in 1776, instituting enlistments of three years or for the duration of the war. This allowed for Washington and his generals to begin to knit together a long-term army. Over the course of eight years of war, one of Washington's greatest challenges and successes was finding and leading a corps of officers that shared the responsibility of molding an army and winning the war. Eighty-one men from all 13 colonies and nine foreign lands served as generals under George Washington. About the only thing they had in common was their leader. Drawing on his innate sense of leadership, Washington skillfully commanded these varied individuals, some who were imposed upon him, some who he chose, and others fresh from Europe, to victory over the British, whose military forces ranked among the most disciplined in the world. We'll begin our discussion with one of our email questions submitted by students watching around the country. Now, Carrie from Brandon High School in Brandon, Mississippi asks, although he commanded the Virginia Regiment in the French and Indian War, George Washington had never commanded a large number of troops. Was he the best choice as commander in chief of the Continental Army and why? Ed, would you like to start with that? Sure. Yes, Washington was the right man for the job and Washington was the only man for the job. Uh, but not quite in the way you might think, because the greatness of Washington as a military commander was in the sum of his parts. As a battlefield tactician, as a leader on the battlefield, he was good, but not great. He made quite a number of mistakes. He lost more battles than he won. Uh, 